I want you to have the future that you deserve to have and that is a future that's full of happiness. It's not a future filled with stomach ulcers and no teeth. So actually in complete truth I have already filmed this video twice before on like two separate occasions um, and I never posted it because each time I just wasn't happy with it and I couldn't really work out the reason why and I think a lot of that was because for me I know I've made videos about you know my my battle with anorexia but I actually suffered for from bulimia for a much longer period of time than I did anorexia. Obviously bulimia short term is really bad for your body but the damage that it does long term can be catastrophic and I still suffer from some of the consequences of being bulimic for such a long period of time like to this day whereas with anorexia I don't really suffer with that anymore so I think for me to talk about bulimia is a lot harder um, just because it still affects me. So. In this video today, my fellow friends, we are going to talk about bulimia and the consequences of bulimia and how you can recover from bulimia because bulimia is a, a, a bastard. It's a nasty, nasty illness and I want to make sure that we get rid of this illness from everyone's lives because it is devastating, it's disgusting and I ain't happy with it. So we're gonna get rid of it, okay? So first off, we're gonna talk about the things that bulimia does to your body. Um, not to mention the fact that you're going to be incredibly dehydrated obviously because you are purging quite a lot um, which depletes your body of the the hydration that it needs from the water so you're gonna have nasty dry skin. Scarred hands. If you are making yourself sick using your hands um, you're gonna be rubbing your knuckles across your teeth a lot which leads to permanent scarring. Um, red eyes, uh, a thing called hamster, like hamster face which is where you get really puffy cheeks a high blood pressure, severe headaches, fatigue. Not to mention, you rot your teeth. You damage your teeth. In case you hadn't noticed, you only have one set of teeth once you're an adult. So if you damage them, that is it. No more. No comprende. You're, you're screwed. Yeah, and ev everyone loves it when, you know, you've got no teeth, so. <laughs> Bulimia damages the, uh, the nerves that signal to your brain when your stomach's full um, and that's often irreversible, the damage to that so your brain doesn't communicate properly with your stomach so that's a good one extreme bloating uh, ulcers in your mouth and your stomach the malnutrition effect of not getting enough nutrients can damage your bone density it can damage your kidneys if you are suffering with bulimia for a number of years and you're a female you can damage your ovaries like your reproductive organs um, which can affect obviously children in the future it can also damage your periods for people that have been suffering from bulimia for a number of years uh, there is a chance that the damage that you do to your ovaries and your periods is in it, it can't be reversed so in some cases being bulimic can leave you infertile which means you can't have children um, which is something that you might want to think about. The impact on your brain and your emotions in terms of constantly feeling worse you make these kind of connections in your brain that when you're full up that's bad and so you feel these feelings of disgust which are just only reinforced when you then allow yourself to feel better because you've been sick. Those negative pathways are really hard to break, so the more you do it, the more you feel better for doing it, which means it's harder to stop doing it. So the best thing to do is just not go down the route in the first place. People who believe it can suffer from heart attacks quite easy, especially if they're using laxatives, um, because they cause electrolyte imbalances, which can cause heart attacks. The acid from your stomach going constantly up through your esophagus out of your mouth um, can leave you with ulcers in your mouth, a sore throat, a swollen throat, um, it can bleed so you can end up spitting blood, being sick full of blood, um, you can actually damage the lining of your esophagus, um, you can get holes in it. Uh... <sighs> Believe me it's messed up, it's really not nice. In terms of the things that have directly affected me, my teeth um, have rotted. Um, 
and it's just kind of hard to talk about. <laughs> um, so I essentially damaged my teeth really badly um, to the point where two of my teeth are dying um, because of the damage I did to them when I was bulimic. Um, and the other ones don't look so great either, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and it sucks to be 19 and to have dying teeth, to be honest, because your teeth are supposed to last you like pretty much your whole life. Um, and that's not the case. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and um, I've got to have like a root canal done and I've got fillings in um, my teeth at the back which sucks <laughs> and um, I suffer a lot with acid reflux it got to the point where like it was so unbearable the acid reflux um, I was in agony a lot of the time it's really painful like there have been times we've gone out to dinner and I'll literally be in tears because of the pain of the acid um, and I'll take Rennie upon Rennie and it doesn't do anything luckily over the past two years it has calmed down a lot um, but the acid reflux was really hard initially because I knew that if I was sick, I felt like I could get rid of some of the acid and it wouldn't hurt as much. Um, so it's hard to fight that off when you're in pain to be like, ah, oh, I know how to remedy this, but you've got to be like, actually sitting here and suffering from the acid reflux is, is better than making myself sick in the long run. Um, so you just have to kind of like battle that out. <laughs> I damaged the lining of my esophagus um, so badly that it's not the right shape really anymore which means that I can get tablets particularly stuck there um, so things like the size of a paracetamol is is enough to get wedged inside my esophagus and what will happen is I'll try and like drink water to get it down and the water will sit on top of the tablet and then eventually my body like my body has to try and like heave up the tablet and it is the most excruciating thing ever. My body will force up the water because it's just sat there. And then I'll literally be bent over the sink, constantly salivating and like spitting everywhere in absolute agony as my body tries to like force the tablet up. And eventually what happens obviously because my body can't do that, it's just not, it can't physically do that. The tablet, because the lining is quite wet, eventually dissolves enough to fall down. But that is agony. It is literally one of the most excruciating things I have ever ever experienced and it still happens now and it will probably happen for the rest of my life now because of the damage that I did to my body from being bulimic um, and it sucks <laughs> I was 13 or 14 when I first started making myself sick I didn't think then about the damage I was doing to my body and how the damage I was doing was gonna last the whole of my life I was just so obsessed with this stupid idea of not being full up. Like, how ridiculous, <laughs> how stupid. Like, is it really worth my teeth? No, it's not worth my teeth. I think for me, I would, I would feel really bad and really unhappy with myself. So I would eat loads of food. I could never get myself to stop eating once I'd started. It was like there was no filter. Like my brain and my stomach didn't recognize when it was full at the right times, like when a normal person would eat and be like, oh, I'm stuffed, I would keep going. And, and like I'd eat to the point where it hurt and I just never felt satisfied. And then I felt like even worse because I'd eaten all the food and then I'd feel like I needed to get rid of it. I still, even though I don't, I don't make myself sick and I haven't done for years, I still, I still struggle with knowing when to stop eating because of the damage I did to my brain and my stomach and the pathways that recognise when you're done. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> so it's something that I'm working on still now. And and I do have to sometimes battle with the fact that like I have overeaten and I'm like, oh, I feel really guilty. But then I'm like, okay, it's fine. My body will digest it. And tomorrow's a new day and we can move on. Now, let's talk about how I got better. <laughs> Obviously, my my parents knew because I had to get um, I had to go to CAMS, which is the Child Adolescent Mental Health Service. So I had like psychiatrists and doctors and stuff check me out. Fun. So my parents were aware of the situation, but my parents were only aware of the situation because I told them. I had a conversation with my mum, and I don't actually remember how I told her, but I realised that like it was enough. 
and I needed to get better. And I think that's the first thing to anyone who who is bulimic, like you need to reach out to someone because when you're in that mindset, your brain is so confused between what's normal and what's not anymore that you can't really make good judgment choices. And when you, when you consult someone who isn't ill and who's in a, a very stable place mentally, it, it's good to get their opinion on things and, and to get support from them because an external person can make choices that you are not capable of making when you're ill. So yeah, reach out to an adult that you trust teacher, nurse, doctor, parent, it doesn't matter, someone you trust and love and it is a really difficult conversation to have because people, they don't really understand it because they're like well why, why would you do that? Whereas I think anorexia has a more, stop motorcycling, it's rude. I think anorexia has a more glorified image than bulimia because with anorexia there's no mess so to speak whereas with bulimia it's very very graphic you are forcing your body to be sick and mm. people recognize that as as unnatural and they're like what do you mean why would you do that how did you even think to do that and there are there's a lot more confusion i think and it's a difficult conversation to have it really really is and it sucks for about an hour and then you work together and you think okay how are we gonna fix this and that's the first step i then went to the doctors obviously i then got signed up to see a psychiatrist which helped um and they helped deal with my emotional issues that had led me there in the first place and i think that's a big point of bulimia is identifying why you were doing that in the first place what were you trying to achieve was it you wanted to lose weight or you wanted to not gain weight because you can't control your food or was it you wanted a certain body image or whatever it was, why were you doing it? And identifying why is a big part because then you can work on how to fix it. In terms of the actual act of binge eating and then making yourself sick, um, my mum watched out for me. So my mum would keep a note of what I was eating, when I was eating, and when she saw me exhibit behavior that she thought was binge eating she would stop me and she'd say Eleanor I think you've had enough and I would be so embarrassed and like and I would instantly get angry and I'd be like who are you to say that or what do you mean like back off stay away because she was trying to stop me from binge eating so that I then wouldn't make myself sick but like I'd be so embarrassed that someone had caught me binge eating that I would feel like disgusted with myself even more but that's a natural part of it. That's that's part of the disorder. So instead, my mom would be like, okay, just come sit down and watch some TV with me or let's go on a walk or let's go on a drive. And and the whole point was that my mum would, she would stop me binge eating by confronting the issue and then she would take me away from the situation. And that's a big part of, of any eating disorder really is you need to take yourself out of a situation which is gonna be harmful for you. Um, so we'd address it, we'd be like, Eleanor, you're starting to binge eat, you need to stop, be like, embarrassment, and then I would be like, okay, let's do something to take me away from the food. And that's a really big, big thing, is just stopping yourself from binge eating in the first place, because it feels uncontrollable, you literally cannot stop yourself, which is why having someone else to say, come on, we're going on a walk, or come on, we need to stop this, is really, really helpful, because you feel like, okay, I can stop, I can stop because I'm with, with someone else, and they're looking out for me. My parents, kept a really good eye on me in terms of like when I went to the bathroom, like when I had showers. They would sit outside, obviously, to make sure that I wasn't being sick, which actually I hated at first, like I really hated it. Um, but part of the reason I hated it so much was because I wanted to be sick and I obviously couldn't. But actually, I think from the minute my parents intervened in terms of like sitting outside the bathroom, um, I think I was only ever sick once and I discussed that time with my mum. It's not common with every bulimic, but with um, a lot of people, there are certain foods that are binge foods and a lot of people's binge foods are ice cream. Mine never was because um, I'm allergic to dairy. Um, but you have to stay away from foods that you binge on uh, because it will just trigger you to want to be sick. So just not consuming those foods that you associate as binge foods for a while until you're better. 
is psychologically a good thing to do because it really just takes you away from from that experience of, of making yourself sick and I want to say bulimia is messed up and I know more than anyone how messed up it is but it is doable if you can develop it you can undevelop it <laughs> that's, that's the way I'm going with this my main tips are talk to a responsible adult that you know and trust to help you who is close to you or, or, or who is a medical professional so parent guardian doctor nurse teacher school nurse someone who is a responsible adult who knows the next steps to help you once you've told your adult if they're a parent if they're not a medical professional i would recommend going to the doctors together to discuss it with a medical professional because at the end of the day bulimia is a serious mental illness but it also affects your body incredibly badly um the same with anorexia so you need to go to a doctor and get them to help you talk with your doctor and your mum or your dad or your guardian etc about techniques to stop you being sick like i said for me you know the calling it out the distractions we, we they my parents never tried to hide the fact i was bulimic and that was the thing they they tackled it head on if you sweep the issue under the rug it will never go away what will happen is you'll sweep it under the rug you'll feel better for a little bit and then it'll come back because you didn't deal with the issue if you attack it head on and deal with it it won't come back and you'll be free of it forever which is what we want this is good <laughs> tell someone head to the doctors work on the techniques so like i said we need distractions when you feel like you want to binge going on walks, talking, hanging out with friends, painting your nails, something, take a cold shower, just something, something to get you away from that situation. In terms of once you've already binged, don't think about it too much, do the exact same thing. I think the main thing to remember is that if you do binge, you've not failed, and if you binge and you purge, you've not failed. As long as you keep trying to recover, you won't fail. It just means sometimes, you know, you slip up. That's just the way it is. But you don't give up if you have a slip up. And at every point you need to be trying to do everything you can to stop yourself from from being sick. So if you, if you binge eat, distract yourself, go on a walk, talk with a friend, that's all okay, you know, it's fine. If you do end up being sick, don't feel even worse about it because you're like, oh, you know, I've given up now, I may, I, I've, you know, I failed. You haven't failed, okay? Just keep going, keep trying, you'll get there. I have no idea if this video made sense and I have no idea if it's gonna be useful, but I just don't want other people to suffer the way that I did and I just want you to get better. Like, I want you to recover more than anything I'm gonna say the exact same thing I said for my anorexia video, like recovery is rebirth and the minute you are free from your eating disorder and the minute that you start to realise how amazing and beautiful life can be when you're recovered, I can't even express to you how much better life is when you're better because, and I hate to reuse the same sentiments but a bad day in recovery is a thousand billion times better than a good day when you're still ill and and that's so true because when you're not suffering on a physical or an emotional level you get to see how beautiful the world is and how beautiful the people around you are and how beautiful you are at the end of the day because you are beautiful and i genuinely believe that everyone is capable of being happy no matter where they come from or what they're suffering with you just have to want it you have to want to recover and at the end of the day if you don't want to recover there's nothing that anyone can say that will make you happy if you want to be happy you have to try and recover because there is no illness that can offer you sanctuary from your own mind and your own unhappiness the only thing that can save you from that, that despair is recovery, is, is feeling better, is wanting to be better, is being happy. And the only way you can achieve being happy is to be better. And I genuinely believe you can. So, my lovely friends on the internet, 
please try and recover. Do everything in your power. I don't know if this video is going to be helpful for you, and I, but I hope it is. I don't want you to have to have dying teeth when you're 19. Like, I want you to have a lovely white smile until you're 92. So, <laughs> please, just try. Just try. If not for you right now, for the you in five years time who's gonna have to go to the dentist to get their teeth replaced or going to the doctor to try and find a way to cope with their acid reflux or their damaged stomach ulcers or 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 the you in ten years time who if you're a woman can't have kids because of the damage that bulimia did to your ovaries I want you to have the future that you deserve to have and that is a future that's full of happiness it's not a future filled with stomach ulcers and no teeth so recover 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 and be happy and that is all i have to say about that so bye <laughs>